All right, in the next part of our project, what we're going to do is continue on and create our DVD. So this is the uh, part two of the video series on creating DVDs with uh, Adobe Encore CS5 and Photoshop and After Effects CS5.5. And um, what I've got here is just a simple diagram just to show what I've got. I've got an opening animation. This is my DVD. Opening animation, which will go to a motion menu that includes um, a link this link goes to a playlist of all videos. This one goes to a menu that has three video thumbnails and then also a same link to the same playlist. And that of course goes back to that menu and that one would go back to that menu. If we played it, the playlist from up here, then it would go back to the main menu. Now this last link over here on the right hand side will jump down to a series of three informational screens where I get to find out a little bit more about each of the three films, such as what date they're going to be released or whatever. And these are going to be trailers for Christmas 2012. So um, I need to go find some movies. So I went to trailers.apple.com and I found one of the things I like here is they've got a lot of thumbnails of these posters and it's very easy just to right click on a thumbnail, save that image, and then save it and rename it because it comes in this poster JPEG. So I've saved three images already and what I like about these is that they're all exactly the same size. Now you may be able to find larger images by going to another website or, or going into the larger version, um, but it's not absolutely necessary that you have them, but you could actually save maybe something, let's see if we can get that. You know, you might have to use, to get those pictures in the background, you might be able to use Firefox, because one of the hidden features of Firefox, if I can bring that up, go to that page is to be able to view the background image and then save that image. So if you want a larger image, you can actually get them, which is kind of cool. So I could get that for Mission Impossible, maybe. So let me, um, let's see, view page source. It doesn't want to allow me to do it. Oh, that's because I'm on the wrong software, duh. It would matter if I was on the right software. Welcome to mistakes in a video. All right, now I can view the background image. Now I could save out that particular image, which would be kind of cool because now I can actually use these backgrounds. So I just thought about that. Let me uh, come to uh, where I'm saving my files. So that's course resources, tutorials, Encore project, assets. This is going to be the background for mission. All right, let's see, what else do I need? I need shame. So let's see, shame is another one that I think I'm using. So I'll come to that one, view that background image, and I'm going to save that image called shame, background shame. And I really should call them shame background. And the last one that I have, if I take a look, is underworld so let me come back whoops I uh, need to be in Firefox underworld I'm sure is there excellent now I can view the background image and then save that save that image background and by the way once again I sh really should do underworld background the reason why is because then it appears in the list properly with underworld if I have Underworld and everything's called Underworld together, then it, it comes up in line in the list. Anyway, the last trailer that we need to get, I can close that down now, is the Mission Impossible trailer. So you can try taking them from this website. You can actually download them, which is kind of cool. You can download like the 720p version. Um, but then I think you need to have iTunes in order to see it. I'm going to go to YouTube and start to play the high def version. Let me go to the 720p. This is the Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol video. And I want to let it kind of get through somewhat and start playing before I go too far um, and try and download it. Now we've got a couple different ways to download it. 
We can download it with a download tool such as I have download it. So that's what it's called. It's a Chrome extension. And I can actually save that file just by clicking on it. And now if I go and look at the folder where it's saved, that I'm pretty sure is the trailer. So let me just double click on it, make sure it is. Looks like Mission Impossible to me. So I've just downloaded that trailer. So this is Mission Impossible trailer. And now I'm going to move it into my assets folder so that I've got it there with everything else. Now, alternately, you could use software such as keepvid.com. And what you would do in this case is give it the URL of the video that you want. It loads the applet. I'm going to run it. And then you could download the 720p MP4 right there. So that works pretty well. You might even try the MP4. Another option is this software called Freemake, which actually allows you to download it and convert it all in one step. But I'm going to dispense with that this time. Anyway, I've got the video that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this at some point, if can. How about I just close that so it's not playing. And let's go on to the next part. So I've got my assets. Let me close that, go to my assets, and take a look at what I have. I have my background for shame. So once again, let's call that shame background. That way it comes up correctly. I've got mission background. So mission, background, we've got a small thumbnail, and I've got the trailer. I've got the large version for the background. I've got the small thumbnail, and I've got the trailer. I've got the large version, the small thumbnail, and the trailer. So I'm getting organized. That's good. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is take a look at converting these files. Because I don't want to bring in the 720 files into um, Encore. It's really a bad idea in my opinion. Now there are a couple ways that you can get these things ready. One way that you can do it is to use software such as the Adobe Media Encoder. Well, so here's the Adobe Media Encoder. And I could import these into the Adobe Media Encoder and encode them to the DVD files that I want. So if I take those and drag them in, it should see them. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to output these things to MPEG-2 DVD. Might take a while for it to register here. And I'm going to go to the presets and use the, let's see, widescreen, progressive widescreen, high quality. I think that will actually work out pretty well for us. So now I'm just going to go in and click on it and take a look at what's going on. The output is what I'm kind of interested in. And you'll see that it's actually um, giving me black bars on the top and the bottom. So I think for this it's going to be okay. We want to really make sure that we're getting the right size though. If we wanted to crop it, we could actually manually crop our um, movie and we could try and get our output um, so it doesn't have those black bars on either side. If I don't go to let's see this 16 by 9 now it'll actually give me something so that the output is gonna be really really close. Let's try 16 by 10. Nope, no, nope, that's not gonna work. 9 by 16. No, nope, I don't think that's going to work either. I'm going to have to go to custom. Because for some reason that 16 by 9 is just not perfect. I've always noticed that. Just not perfect. So that's getting close. That's getting really close. You can see we've got a couple little bars here and there. Now that looks just about right. It says that I'm I'm cropping about 154 pixels on each side. 
and if I crop it right in the center you'll see that I get a true like widescreen 16 by 9 but the problem with this is that it is deleting a little bit of video on the left and right so that means I'm getting rid of that stuff but I'm getting it to fit just right so anyway I'm gonna hit OK oh I should have checked out one other thing let me see about multiplexing right now you'll see it says none I am gonna multiplex it as a DVD I think that's a very important thing I'm also gonna use the constant bitrate and just leave it the way it is the the uh, quality settings says four eh, maybe I'll take that up to five let's see VBR one pass let's do CBR at 6,000 kilobytes per second I think that'll work as well so this is not really about how to perfectly encode videos but what I'm doing by by uh, cropping out that middle section is I'm really getting rid of those black bars in the top and the bottom now that's not to say that it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep them because every once in a while it's probably a good idea to have those so that your output has the um, black bars on the top and the bottom because that's kind of the way you're used to seeing trailers anyway that way you get to see that wide screen and I think for the ones that are still encoding that that have not encoded yet that we should be able to get the proper output it's a very dark video see now we're getting the black bars in the top and the bottom so currently it is encoding and you'll see there it is and I've got one encoding that is going to be getting rid of those bars on the top and the bottom and then the next two even though the first one right now is encoding um, it's going to uh, encode the black bars on the top and the bottom which uh, which is very normal but what's really important is that we have 720 by 480 which is the DV NTSC widescreen it's very important that we have our files exactly the right size before we take them into Encore so I'm gonna let this continue and when it's done um, encoding we'll come back and pick up where we left off so my last video is about to finish encoding and you'll see this is um, item three of three and I've got only 20 seconds left so it's going well um, and you can see a preview of that's nice now I do want to point out real quick that of course um, with what the techniques we're using right now we're basically stealing our images and videos from other websites this is great for educational projects where you're just trying to learn stuff but this is not at all what you are allowed to do if it's a commercial type of project you can get yourself in major trouble in fact if this is a major of uh, this is a project so it's very important that you put into your designs later on that you've designed this for educational purposes anyway I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the folders where I've saved things whoops alright so here are the files now if I take a look there is the trailer MPEG that is the 720 by 480 file that is the DVD file now I've got this XMP SES and XMP we don't really need to worry about these I could actually delete these from right now um, they may come back it's just one of those files um, metadata files that is created with with a lot of software like this But let's take a look there you go now you can see on this one I have scaled it to be a different size so I don't have my black bars on the top and bottom if I take a look at the other one you'll see that I've got my um, black bars on the top and bottom so this one is uh, definitely looking a little bit more cinematic but be aware that that black is actually video so if we try and scale this down you'll notice that that black is still a part of it so that's where um, using the encoding tools to to cut off the black is is sometimes nice but um, anyway we have the basics that we need so um, taking a look at what we have um, we've got our three videos and we've got the backgrounds and the images we are missing the information so we'll just make that up at a later time and now we need to look at creating our menus in Photoshop and even After Effects to bring into our DVD so that's what we're gonna go into next um, 
And so let's go ahead and stop here and go on to the next tutorial.